All right, folks. Welcome back from that break, and thank you for watching. We are getting into the next series. This is the losers match, and somebody here will be eliminated from the tournament. And someone else will go on to the finals of the group. More on those details in a minute. I do actually got to get around to thanking Lee Omen, by the way. He, he just donated some bucks our way, and I'll get to that in a moment. But he also pledged to my Patreon recently, which I have not gotten a notification about that in God knows how long. <laughs> so, yeah. Lee Omen, thank you very much for double dipping into that pile of awesome support that you are kind enough to provide. We'll do shout outs in a moment. Before then, though, the players to introduce in the top left. Playing for Flipside Tactics. He's the McCann man himself, M. Canning. In the bottom right, as the purple Terran from Canada, he is Semper. Yeah, let's rub that in, why don't you? Canada. Just eat it. Canada. Why can't he be? be Tastes like M. Canada. It's called poutine. It tastes like poo. <laughs> wow, you're going too far. You need to settle down and simmer down. Uh, I think we said Gilgo, thank you already, but uh, just in case, there's the double shout out. Uh, T Campbell 88, sub for 23 months. Will Lander hit us up for 15. Foonly, we sub for 29. Of course, as we mentioned before, Leoman just threw $10 our way to say, uh, show this stream during ad time, Kappa. Uh, I can maybe look at whatever that link is after, but I can't look at it now because it requires clicking on it. Yeah, it is a, a clip of For Honor, and it has one of the characters constantly hip thrusting to the <laughs> song something on me. I actually don't remember the name of the song. Take <laughs> no, 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 no. I wouldn't remember that name. No, it's a, it's like a dance song from like the 90s. Um, yeah, just so you guys are aware, I know most streamers have something Call set up where me. like YouTube is easily... Uh, you play a playlist, song requests, etc. We, we've got all that disabled on the channel, so when you like actually put links and stuff in your donations, they're not so easy for us to access. But, Leo, thank you nonetheless. And, of course, for those who don't know, that $10 is going to be just forwarded over to our tournament fundraiser plan slash fund. So make sure to type exclamation mark mega if you want to learn more about that. But the big thing that I will once again emphasize, the event brights out. If you guys are going to these live finals in California at the end of March, type in exclamation mark live finals in chat. Get the link and make sure to sign up on that event bright as it will guarantee you a spot in the, uh, the building. And of course, the yeah. big sell too is that it's free. You guys aren't gonna have to pay a single dollar to get in. Just the cost of, I guess, bus or gas or whatever, however you're getting there. But uh, it will cost fifty dollars to get a signature from me. So make sure you got the cash, guys. Are you actually gonna charge people for signatures? Get out of here. Yes, I will actually charge people fifty dollars for signatures. Get the fish in for now. I just know they do it with Comic Con with like celebrities and I stuff. And I always thought it was so silly. I don't know. One day maybe we'll, our signatures will be worth it. Till then, I don't think anyone in StarCraft, I don't think anyone in esports has asked for money yet for signatures. Yeah, the but thing I'm not is, sure. don't quote me on that. Well, the thing is, I, I I really just appreciate having fans who want a signature. Like, for me, that's payment enough that you're a fan who wants my signature. That's cool. That's the biggest thank you. I like. But anyways, uh, I still feel awkward when people do want signatures. I've signed my fair share of books and posters, and I'm always like, oh, really? You want me to waste the ink on this? Sure, why not? <laughs> Yeah, and then you ruin my signature. You guys stop doing that. I don't ruin. I feel like what I've done is enhanced the signature. No. <laughs> no. For those who don't know, if anyone ever asks me to sign something after Zombie Grub, I tend to uh, write is a butt or such around her signature. I never ruin the signature itself, though, in fairness. Like, I never write on it or ruin it. Like I, I don't said, like enhance it. it. Don't appreciate it. Thank you to Lumberjack for the 500 bits. More B, more buys. More bits. Hey. More bits. Towards the base street TV, mega amazing, super awesome tournament to make esports awesome again in 2017. Except those go to us, so I don't know. Um, I do like the name the of that, donations. though, for the tournament. We could we could call it that. Yeah, I guess what, we could. What would the, uh, hang on, the abbreviation would be Ma Masatmese. Wait, no, what? You you since you, you did you start with B? Oh right, <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking at the make. Okay, uh, yeah, we'll explain the bits thing in a moment. We got the Oracle kind of dipping around. It looks a little bit scary for Semper. Uh, Semper, it didn't have the greatest start for the day, but it wasn't versus Protoss. It was versus Zerg. So we'll see what his TVP is looking well, like. Actually. It was pretty good last time we saw him. 
he had an amazing start to the day with an awesome comeback, but uh, you know, overall it wasn't so great. I don't know. Yeah. I, I really like Semper and I don't want to take anything away from him, but I still feel like that was more untrue than him. That very first game that we're referring to. But uh, yeah, for those who don't know, because we've decided to take a significant hit to our, our income by, by forwarding donations to the fundraiser, uh, the only way we're really making money right now is through subs, ads, and bits. So bits you guys give to us, that goes to our pockets. That's how we pay our rent. That's how we buy our food. But all donations and all tips, those go towards the fundraiser. When you can see we've been doing stream drop-offs here and there. I think I still have to drop off like 40 bucks or something from the, that last stream. But uh, Actually, what are we at today from that? Because we got a couple donations already. One billion dollars. Yeah, and if we take away a couple decimal places, that's probably close to accurate. I uh, know we're at 92 bucks today, so that's $92 so that we're dropping off into the dollars. fundraiser once all's said and done, which is cool. There's commas and dollars. <laughs> so by the way, bit of a shout out to Maturino. Uh, if you guys didn't see, I announced on Twitter earlier today that all BTSLs after the Season 2 Finals are going to have an extra $100 attached to every prize pool. So the weekly is now worth $200, and the monthly final is going to be worth $500, and that's thanks to Maturino. So really cool dudes all around. Plus... They've given us $500 to host a show match with once our Corsair tournament's done. Yeah. Plus the Scarlet Cooking stream that's coming up, I think, next Sunday. I actually have dates and times yeah. I should tweet about for that. Uh, plus the fact that they've been facilitating the fundraiser. So they've just been absolutely helpful all around. A lot of yays going around. So this game, not much has happened. Three base versus three base. Just Oracle tagging every now and then. I guess, well, I'm canning got a fast with your base, but Sampras is going down right now. He's once again found himself cross position on Cactus Valley, but this is not nearly as brutal uh, in PVT as it is in CBT. So, yeah, the style that M Canning is going for can be considered pretty brutal, though. I mean, again, we're talking about disruptors and M Canning, and we, didn't, we haven't really seen him get to use it for very long. And this game, he's not going to go for disruptors either, but this style, this. Phoenix Adept style has been definitely just confusing some other it's, Terrans. It's been really good though, and, and what I like about it is just you see that quick control to pick up the Widow Mines is the best way to remove them from the fight. Combined with the fact that the Widow Mine damage was recently nerfed, again they do less damage to shields. Uh, I can't. I keep. When are they gonna fix this? I can't mouse over on North America. This is so annoying. Can I you do it? I never. We'll never fix. No one will ever fix it. Ah. Um, well, no, I can't. Regardless, I think it's 25 less damage or something now for shields. It's pretty rough. And we'll see if this hurts. Uh, this first hit, though, ends up dragging on top of the Phoenix. It's like a mini EMP, so it will still strip the shields. But you guys will note, not much more than that. The Phoenixes are not in yellow or anything like that, despite that pretty good hit. Bad man. Uh, I would say that Semper has to be a little more careful than M. Canning does. I mean, they both actually have decent armies, so don't get me wrong. It's just that uh, occasionally you'll see Terran to be like, oh, that doesn't look so bad. I'll just make sure not to run my Metavex in first, or my Widow Mines will be burrowed, or, you know, something like that. And then one thing or another won't happen, and they'll be overwhelmed because a Warp Prism comes in you didn't expect, suddenly warps in seven more depth, and you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> that oh. wasn't what I wanted to have happen. Yeah. Uh, big thank you to Space Care for the Twitch Prime sub, by the way. It says, keep up YouTube. I use it a lot. Dude, it's always cool when we meet one of our YouTube viewers here on Twitch. So, Yay. that's cool to hear, man. Uh. Um, but as I talk about that scenario there, that wasn't really happening this game, M. Canning did not get a War Prism, or he's not using it to reinforce, rather. He's using it just go for harassment. And he's already transferred over into, like, Double Robo, Robotics Bay, uh, God, a lot of though. upgrades. That is a lot of Adepts. 33 Adepts. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. But that's also a lot of Widow Mines. So even though they've been nerfed recently, that is what you want against Adept Phoenix, is as many Widow Mines as possible. A couple of to help out because they do get like more than a few shots in before Phoenixes can take them down. But, uh, you know, again, if these Widow Mines do not get the good shots, the Liberators are on Siege or, you know, any variety like this. And Semper could be losing a lot of army. There's no retreat with those Phoenixes up in the air. Mm, picks up the Pylon. Okay, start. You're right. Like, the fact that you can't outrun those Phoenix, that means the Medivacs are committed. These Widow Mines, though, are in such an interesting spot. I mean, M. Canning ah. sees all of them. So it's questionable, but yeah, I was wondering if he's going to actually go through with that transfer or not. I don't think it would have been that bad. I was actually really concerned for Semper because his reinforcements would have been cut off by the Widow Mines and only slightly protected by the Liberators, but MK doesn't go for it. I mean, as long as he's pushing back the immediate threat to his Nexus, he doesn't have to do anything against this. He's going to expand to the other fourth base, so it's not like he's worrying about expanding to the right side. Well, I guess he could, but 
you know, either either one, and he just wants this off his back so he doesn't worry about it. It's actually not an immediate threat yet. <laughs> just Tactics Marine was a little bit awkward. Yeah, the threat of this transfer is actually doing a great job. Like, not actually transferring through, but just the threat of it almost transferring is scary enough. This disrupting is a pretty good hit on some of those Marines. A lot of the ground forces for Sniper have been cut out, but they are running across the map. This rally of purple dots looking to come to those front lines and aid this. The splits are okay, the transfers get cancelled, and M Canning is not going to commit to this, not so easily. Time warp goes down, though, and this might be the one he decides to go through with. The Mothership Core is dead, after all. And, mm -hmm. oh, how many adepts? Is 40 freaking adepts. He's got to go through with this one. Oh, he is. Nope. 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 I, I thought he was going to, too. I, I, I didn't want him to, though, because he's, he's got disruptors on the way, so wait for those things. Continue keeping the body lock your back, and then slowly... Take away no, the widow could, mines, making this a lot easier. I almost wish you would aim the disruptors at the widow mines and not the bio. If you remove the yeah. widow mines, then the adepts can easily take care of that bio. But free hits are free hits. Losing some probes to it. No expansion to the left side while this goes on. Avoidery tries to wrap around the back side. It's going to catch some of the liberators, but eat a widow mine in the face. Yeah. Uh, starting to get very difficult to control everything whoop, outside of that whoop. liberator range. A couple units getting a lot of shots. And Canning still can't confidently clean this up, but time's kind of ticking away here, man. Like, he just... Oh, God, he actually lost a lot right there. I have no retreat. This is a disruptor. There's a bunch of adepts. Blink's not done, but he's still warping in Stalker, so they're actually kind of useless army. And Semper... I mean, it's been a long time coming, but he's finally got enough pressure to actually kill the base. Yeah, he, he did expand finally, but I think this should have come down much, much sooner. Like, once he realized this base was going to be a point of contention for, like, three minutes straight, M. Canning should have had another Nexus started up. Uh, if there was a Warp Prism in Samper's main, if there's something else going on, I would certainly be able to justify him not taking these fights, but his sort of hesitance to get in there with the Phoenix and poke and then withdraw, it's, it, the Disruptor shots are just not making up for the loss of that Nexus. There was a Warp Prism, but I guess it just was cleaned up very easily by Semper. I didn't even see it go down. Mm. Uh, we got uh, some bits back there, by the way, from, I think, Black Sword. Yeah, a thousand bits. Thank you so much for that generous amount of bits, man. We do appreciate it. So bits it is with a shrug face. The sup, son. Uh, that was a pretty good disruptor hit, but M Cannon's gonna need a few more. This is a case oh, where Semper no, 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 does no, no, have no, no, his no. fourth base. He's looking to get Liberator range. I love this oh, though. Factor. He's he has recognized that it is a rally, and this sort of rally is why you see people not rally, but instead clump up and then push out in a second force. So adepts can't catch them like this. But M Canny. Well, be it very slowly, has been being pushed back into his uh, base more and more. What do my shots go off? Actually, don't work out so good. The Swepper shots looking to go down, but the Phoenix have pretty much been removed from the equation. So now, if Samper ah. wants to retreat, the Medivacs can get out of there alive. But oh, the disruptor hits are good. Oh, he definitely looked away for a second, letting those Marauders go in like that. Now he still has an okay army supply. So oh man, he's actually losing the Wooderminds too. That also sucks. Oh, but no. he's still okay. Um, but that was. That could have been better. He was sniping the disruptors. He still had wood of mines to back off into, and then he just let everything clump up, get by disruptor, and then, well, decided to back off completely because he had other things to worry about and does lose his position. That is not. Uh oh. Oh, okay. That's, that's, that's fun. Um, Semper has to recollect his forces. He still has liberators, but no longer that many wood of mines. Yeah, and my concern is the bio for. Whoa. Okay, I didn't press anything on my phone, but something started up there. Sorry about that. Turn that down, but uh, the bio force isn't quite out of hand. You know, normally, there's a lot more marauders, a lot more marines, but he has been bleeding those out pretty consistently through the disruptors. Mm, these constant sims too. They still have a decent amount of medivacs, and they still have some energy, but it's a little worrying losing all these marines. Liberators will will have their range very very soon, and they are advancing forward. Remember that mechanic, even though we got. Uh, a fourth, technically, it's really just been put into his, his third, so he's still only on uh, one and a half basis mining, where Semper can lift his main orbital even. That fourth is a real fourth, the planetary and everything. Oh yeah, down here. He's been so focused on MKN side of the map, I haven't really looked back over Semper for a while. Mm, uh, but this base gets cancelled. Uh, the Adepts cannot stop the planetary, but they can stop the SCVs from mining from it if they sit behind the mineral lines. I mean, again, I think a, a Warp Prism would be amazing for M-Candy in this situation, because Semper is pretty much just rallying everything straight across the map, but an A move into the Planetary, that's going to cost them some Adepts. I catch mm. some Marines on this side, but uh, probes are dying to a Liberator that sets up over the third. About 10 go down, that's not feeling good. Yeah. This Liberator range is going to be a huge problem. It It's something that you can beat back if you have enough you know, Stalkers and... 
I just hope to get a couple good shots. But usually, by the time they have more than six, eight liberators or oh, uh, geez. liberator range, you know, you'd like to have Stargate tech. Something that I hadn't realized has been creeping up this whole game is upgrades. Semper's about to finish 3-3 three, three, and Mkanning's still on 1-1. One, mm -hmm. one. Granted, disruptors don't need upgrades, but these stalkers, if they're on plus three, they could they could easily pick these liberators out of the sky. Plus one weapons though makes it a lot more difficult to deal with and a lot more difficult to do. Yeah, this is very awkward. And those two liberators look very juicy and trying to take them down. The other liberators are still protecting them somewhat. I, so. I almost feel like just blinking underneath this would be worth it. He's bleeding out his unit so awkwardly otherwise, anyways, he's gonna lose that disruptor production here and Oh, depowered at well, I'm guessing that's hundred percent. Again, can't mouse over because NA, but this gets all sort of chaotic. M. Kang's army supply is halved that of Semper's, and I think it's safe to say Semper is running away with the game at this point. Oh, yeah. The gateway units that were left over were like wet noodles, man. There's actually a bit of, like, uh, quite a few of them, but 3-3 three, three had finished up, so... Still, three Marauders left alive. Liberator can't be dealt with. Well, it was awkward. It's eventually going to be dealt with. Uh, but Semper's going to go back. He's been reinforcing at home. So he has uh, 60 army supply advantage still, and another base on the way. He just needs to bulk up and, and move in. I don't know where these medivacs are going. I mean, part of it is bulking up, but part of it is almost straight up just being in A-move territory. Those upgrades, the 3-3 three, three is insane. When you consider most of this army was with Stalkers for a while. Marauders already wrecked Stalkers. Given the plus three weapon advantage, yeah, even further. GG. Semper is going to take that first game. I think okay. at, for, a, for a, I will say a good portion of that game... Especially with the siege up on that third, I saw a lot of potential. I thought that M Canning would have made the right move. The transfer goes in. Semper loses his army and can't make a, a you know response to a counterattack. Mm -hmm. But losing the third, slowly bleeding and just giving up. I mean, M Canning really started hurting for a long yeah. time. Yeah, I mean, we we see in that situation actually a, a lot of times, you know, specifically on Cactus Valley, we've been seeing even the Korean Terran trying to bring a missile turret like earlier on and like have that same position. But the point is, I think like you either have a war prism bringing the army back and distracting or getting like massive amount of damage anyways, which is like I think the easiest slash nicest way to beat that back. Uh, or you just have to kind of bite the bullet and and take it down before it gets too entrenched. Because at first it's six wood of mines and two liberators, and then it's like you know ten wood of mines and and seven liberators, and you're your, uh, your depths won't cut it, so... That was, like, a really weird point of, like, M. Canning knew he wanted to break it, but also knew he was about to have some good tech and no disruptors, and it was kind of just... It, it just ended up, you know, stalling out so long. Mm. Well, we're going to be getting into Belshire for the next game. Uh, quickly getting caught up on subs we've missed, and sorry, guys, this has been such a crazy amount of action in these games. Uh, Drunken Master hit us up with a 26-month resub a little while ago, cheering for M. Canning, or Mick... Anning. <laughs> uh, F7 Super Serial for 26 months. There's so much content. My body can't handle it. I know, guys. We do more than two daily casts over here on Base Trade TV. And in these cases, sometimes up to 25 games a day. It's awesome. It's great. And I love StarCraft. So thank you guys for joining and supporting us doing it. Last but not least, Noah Bell for 37 months is Ace Kate or Riots. Man, I don't know if you guys have been watching my Twitter. My mom has been sending me all these pictures of my cat when she was a kitten. I've just been reposting them for everybody. I miss my cat so much, but she was so cute as a kitten. Although, in fairness, I suppose most kittens are cute as kittens. Yeah, what if people looked like kitten and been like, nah. Dog people. <laughs> That's Okay, right. besides that. Actually, when I got Apollo, I was really excited to see what he looked like when he was growing up. I had the opposite of the, oh, I wish you could see a kitten forever. Well, ladies and gentlemen, game number two. Again, this is the loser's match. Somebody's going to be eliminated from the Ting Open today here in this best of five. And so far, it's not going to be him. In the upper left, he's got one point on the board. It's the purple Terran, Semper. In the bottom right is the red Protoss. He is M. Canning. So I do want to talk a little bit more on that previous game, specifically that Siege Up around the third. I've seen M. Canny on his stream be in that situation, maybe not to that extent, but be in similar situations and not get pushed back through it. For me, I do wonder, M. Canning's still somewhat new to the tournament scene. You know, we see him play in the odd Alima League or this, that, and the other, but generally speaking, he's not a regular tournament contender. You know, he takes, I think he's going to school full time still, and StarCraft's kind of his, his secondary thing to do. I don't know if there's like the tournament jitters affecting him or not. 
but it feels like that may be the case. And I only say this because I've watched him stream and I've seen him handle situations like that a little bit better than what we saw happen just now. Whereas Semper, he's been on main stages for Red Bull. He's He's been in tons of online tournaments. It's no question in my mind, this guy is, there's no stage fright going on over here. And I'm not trying to make up excuses for him, Canny, and I'm not trying to give him an easy out. It's just, that's my guess because I have been watching him stream. And I have seen mm. him play games better than that. Uh, I can't say much about that, but I can definitely, like, I think... We watch the Korean Pro Dosses, and they'll have Resident Evil Phoenix, and they'll break that push with that composition. And you don't think much about it, I think. You know, you just say, like, okay, well, that's what they're supposed to do. But, again, and Canning had this option of waiting for Disruptors. It, it does look like a very scary thing to break, especially because Semper had, I think, an odd amount of Widow Mines. I would say yeah. ideally the Protoss has cut the Widow Mine count to, you know, four or less at well, most engagements. And that, that started off with, I think, six or seven. There's the added part of this, too, where, like, hypothetically, those transfers we saw almost go through, they, they go down, but the Widow Mine yeah. splash isn't as bad as it was. So even if there are those extra Widow Mines, it might actually just look like normal because you need extra Widow Mines to make up for the damage that they lost in the nerf. <laughs> All right, yeah. yeah. I definitely think that's just one of those things where maybe in some world, the, the waiting for the disruptors would have worked out. Uh, but I think next time, if it happens next time, like he goes with the exact same composition and the same attack happens, uh, M Candy might just try and break it uh, with the composition he has. Uh, as it is, of course, now he's gone for something different. No Stargate openers. Oh. Apparently, you missed Vega 62A for a resub. Uh, if we did, I'm super duper sorry, but here's your shout out, sir. Yeah. But oh. holy guacamole! Holy you thought I was done? Oh, you. Reminds you of someone? Dude, Black Sword just set us up with 10,000 bits. Not everyone here sub to base straight TV, but if you are, can we get some Tasia claps in chat for this guy? And if you're not, throw down some hearts because to give you guys context, a lot of people don't know what bits are worth. That's like a hundred bucks he just gave the channel. Yeah. That's phenomenally generous. Thank you so much, Black Sword. I'll give you some yeah. Tasia claps on that delay. Because <laughs> if I do it now, you'll have to scroll up and look for them. <laughs> yeah, right. But All okay. Right, so, uh, we do have a drop. Drop coming in. Yeah, That's and this drop has a Widow Mine in it. But, and Canning already has an Observer on the way, so this might not be so bad to handle. An Overcharge plus uh, this this Observer coming back should be able to handle yeah. it. I was going to say, that should be a second Observer, and it shouldn't be. Uh... Yeah, okay, it was. Yeah. <laughs> it should be put in the position that scouts for this as the other one goes across the map. So exactly what happens while well, there is a the little added difficulty of the <laughs> Marines and the scan going down, it's roughly come out to be the same thing where I, you know, it's, it's three pros is not bad, but I'm like, would have ideally had zero. I'm like 95% sure he focus fired down the observer with that scan. By the way, that was really cool. I like that touch. That was, that was a really oh. nice touch. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I'm surprised he didn't have that observer already halfway across the map. I guess I thought that was the uh, unit at the, Zel Naga, but uh, that does mean M Counting is not getting to scout the follow up. And uh, I would say yeah. usually it's like a fair guess, right? Like two, you know, two barracks come down, maybe a third CC. But I think on Bellshear it's even more important to actually scout the timings and all of that because these tank pushes have been wrecking, uh, you know, Protoss. I think it's okay to expand basically. <laughs> well, uh, so, uh, a couple things to touch on. First off, thank you, Wandering Llama for the Twitch Prime sub. You just happen to wander into the, the sub box, I guess. Welcome to the base trade brigade. <laughs> but M Canning, uh, going for Blink first is something we've actually seen him do a lot of. And it's been really good at catching medevacs and stopping drops from getting out of hand, especially if you're not going for Phoenix for that. But the Disruptor's follow up to this uh, through that Robo Bay, I think is kind of expected. Again, this is like his preferred play style. It can go really well. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I would just be blown away if even... I don't know that Colossus are even that good in the matchup anymore, but again, M Canning's play style really doesn't go that direction. So yeah, Disruptor comes out first. Uh, so important to note, yeah, Semper did go for the push off to the left. Now a probe scouts it, which is nice, because otherwise M Canning had no other scouting. Again, that Observer was, was pulled back. So he can get his units a bit more in position, but it's like, it's too late to take this position out. And this is the one that Terran really wants. Now there's no stim, combat shields will finish, but the tanks are just a little too much to, to bear and, and canning is He's unfortunately. Gonna have to cancel. Yeah, gonna have to cancel this base. Well, combat shields kicks in too, so he's ready to take a fight if he needs to. Disruptor's still gonna be an amazing thing if it can hit, but 
Uh, you know, the Snockers, the Immortal, they don't have that much power thanks to the Liberator and the tank combo. But that Disruptor can sit back and fire from far away, and that's what's really nice about it. In fact, it could even hit some of those tanks, but it uh, doesn't get close enough to do just that. Um, it's it's such an annoying position because the, you know, the, the ramp is the Liberator spot, so the Tudor can't get quite close enough. And even if it can, some Terrans just put those tanks behind the rocks, and then the Disruptor really can't reach back there. But it still protects the Marines if they run back into it. So... It just, it's, I mean, whether, like, his Nexus timing earlier or later it doesn't seem to really matter. Like, Ooh, it's just a really no. awful push to deal with. So he takes the other Nexus in hopes of kind of sneaking it away while Semper's looking over here. But Semper did load up two drops to go on the right side of the map. And while he may or may not clean this up very well, Semper's going to be able to unload those drops and kill that new Nexus pretty easily. Yeah. Yep, 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 that's too bad. As M Canning did have a decent cleanup, even though one of his disruptors got sniped, the fact that he's now had to cancel his Nexus twice and it was already kind of like a... Uh, that's tough. That's really late tough. Late one. Mm. Semper is doing some good damage, but do remember that Semper is also on a third CC. The upgrades are even. I mean, he's not running away with this game yet, but he is doing a really nice job. Yeah. Uh, Rick P, by the way, oh, I think for 29 damn. months. But, ooh, those overcharges were nasty. Yeah, got the medevac with the most units. On the cancel the Nexus, though. Oh, boy. Uh, that's three. That's not good. Pylon's going to go down, too. And you just pick up and walk away from that disruptor. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Rick P says, by the way, speaking of Tasia Clap, God, I miss that boy. Yeah, Tasia was a fun dude. I will say, though, you know what? I, there are some players... Like, Parting has recently started coming back. I don't know if uh, Tasia has got that in his cards or not, but some of the players who we thought were done with StarCraft for good have been playing a little bit again recently. Yeah. So maybe. It's not crazy, but maybe Tasia comes back at some point. Hmm. He's just waiting for David Kim to fix the game, guys. <laughs> He's waiting for the summer, I believe is the accurate assessment there. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Alright, so uh, M. Canning's finally getting this Nexus up, it looks like. He has obviously dealt with his main base with the pylon wall of overcharges, well, so Semper's going to have to be a little more clever with his drops. Well, prior to this drop going off, Resources lost actually really similar. And I'm wondering mm. if, well, hang on. Oh, that disruptor getting focused down is, that's gonna hurt. He does kill the medevac, so it'll clean up the rest of the drop, but going to the income graph, it's gonna favor Semper, sure. But as we can see, it's not by a whole lot. Like, M. Candy wasn't that far behind. In fact, he had leads prior yeah. to these Nexus cancels. So this game, despite the fact that Semper had a really good start with canceling those Nexus, he's not exactly running away with it either. His own third CC was pretty late. It's only just coming down now. And yeah. the SVs are being transferred, unfortunately, into Ooh. three adepts are looking for just this opportunity. Oh, no, 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 or no, no, not. Oh. They're like, you know what? <laughs> I don't care. Well, some some of the transfers up here do get killed. It looks like trained up for Marines at best. Scan looking for the army. Doesn't see much more than a single adept. This, uh, you know, this looked a lot rougher. This, this was like, I guess the best way I can describe it for Semper was like a lot of superficial damage. Like it looked like he was doing a lot and he certainly was hurting M. Canny. But the fact that he wasn't getting hit simultaneously back at home is the only reason he's not running away with this game. And M. Canny is absolutely now in a position where he can fight four disruptors. That's a lot of power to kill a lot of bio very quickly. Uh, uh, it's a little concerning that Semper is already on his way to Liberator range. It's not out yet. Uh, there's once again a lot of Widow Mines. We do have a very similar looking push to Cactus Valley. Similar numbers of very heavy hitting units. Those Widow Mines and those Liberators. But this time he's just going to have much faster Liberator range. You can you can set that very soon, really, with his third base now being up and running. Mm. Well, as the Widow Mines advance forward, they are pretty notorious for clumping, and that's where Simper does have to be a bit careful. Of course, that's where the power of Disruptors really shine, but... Oh. Uh, he doesn't know about these on the left side. If he did, that'd be such a free hit to kill all four of them. Semper oh. has some pretty good splits, I want to I wanna note. I mean, in the last game, he got those pumped up Marauders, and that was pretty, pretty bad of him. But usually he's pretty on top of things. Uh, I guess on the back the side. Lines, it, well, liberators. The big thing was uh, he does force the reposition of the Liberators, and while killing the Widowmines is great, he did manage to get Adepts across the map while all of this was going on, and this actually forced Semper to look away for a moment, allowing those mistakes to happen. So, 8 SCV kills, not bad, but he still doesn't have a real concrete way to deal with these Liberators. That's where I really like this Void Ray coming into play. I don't think I've seen a game yet where the oh. Void Ray... Oh no, we just missed it. Oh, 17 probes got wrecked geez. by Widowmines. So I was looking at the medevac, I was wondering why the stalkers that I didn't realize the medevac was hiding in the bottom right this entire time. So M. Canny also a little bit distracted, takes some pretty nasty hits, but to be honest, all that did was not devastate M. Canny, but bring him back down to like even levels. 
Right. Semper had lost eight SCVs earlier and just lost four right here. So uh, they've been exchanging oh, workers please, killed. Please run. So oh, no. Speed. Oh, no. Let's say. Okay, right, eight more go bad. down. M Canning still has a decent army. He's pushing forward here. He might have plus two armor for the engagement. But Semper's very close to having his Liberator range. He now sees the army. Good good thing he did, too, because his army was really split up. Uh, I don't know about Still blinking forward. Up. This is a little bit worrisome. Uh, the army's going to spend more time running and less time fighting, but this oh, is where the concave, disruptors though. try and get some hands. But you're right, the concave's good, Woo! and the disruptors all miss, so M. Candy in full retreat. Concussive Shell's going to hold those disruptors in place. He's going to lose wow. almost both of them. Okay, all right. So that was so awkward, but it ended up going There's... okay for both parties. I Man, Panning just needs those disruptors to be off the cooldown. There's a really important question we need to ask very quickly to you, though, Zombie Girl. Do you think this medevac gets out alive before the end of the game? <laughs> I don't think it moves. I, I think it stays there, alive. All right, well, we'll find out as uh, maybe an F2 comes into effect or not. But all the stalkers are pulled in, like, front line. Ah! Oh, look at our good disruptor hit. Does get it. Void rays out. This is where you start cleaning up those liberators, no too. There's not really any more needs <laughs> to cover this. Oh, God. I was going to talk about, uh, before everything happened, how I've never really seen the Void Ray be that convincing in the later stages of a PVT, because, like, eight Liberators are usually protected by a dozen or so Marines, right? But this one ended up being pretty perfect. Semper has to retreat. M. Canning might be feeling the burn a little bit here. He's got less workers. He's got less army by, like, a very, very tiny little amount there. But he is getting a fourth base and slowly rebuilding everything. Uh -huh. I mean, okay, army size aside for a moment. Oh, this is where Liberators Plus, I think Liberator Range was researched at some point. Yeah, this really comes into effect. But the Disruptors are worth so much... It's it's funny. They can be worth so much more supply than they actually are. Like, the fact that they can potentially get a kill that just obliterates 10 Marauders. Like that, that's really scary to consider, but that's really on Semper to make that mistake. You catch a couple of these Liberators through the middle of the map, and that's great. But Tempest now on the way... I still favor Void Rays really heavily to deal with Liberators. I think while Tempests are great, they take so long to actually whittle away at them. Whereas Void Rays are just oh, like, okay, out of my way, coming through. Prismatic alignment. I, <laughs> I again, like I haven't seen a game where I'm convinced <gasps> that late game Void Rays are the way to go. Looks like uh, Medivac died, by the way. It does look that way. <laughs> so are, are, are we tied up again now? Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think we are, yeah. I think, yeah, it was, I think I you had one up on me. Uh, anyway, uh, but right, so like the void rays later on just don't seem to be enough because usually Liberty is protected by a lot of Marines over the oh, lines. God. But uh, Tempest do take a very long time, you're absolutely right, and they do have that slow attack, Did they... so. They didn't increase Liberty range, right? This just looks really weird. Like, I know it just Liber... looks... Well, usually you don't see it at the most extended point, I feel. Like, they're too yeah, busy sieging up in an emergency or up against a Nexus so they don't bother using the extent of their range. Anyway. Well, this drop gets away with a lot. The cannon's not going to be able to do much other than buy time. The probes are pulled away. If he keeps the probes alive, that's not so bad. But losing the Nexus is still going to really hurt this late in the game. Here's that problem with the Tempest, right? Like, again, they, they've got rage. They can fire from far away, but it takes so long to knock all those Liberators oh. out of the sky. Yeah, that was also just kind of clumsy control, really. Uh, M. Canning should... I don't think he should really be engaging before he has a certain number of Tempests. You know, he got he got bullied back, and when you get bullied back against the Liberator range, you lose units trying to retreat because the range is pretty good. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, that that should not have been a case where I think he was out in the middle of the map as he was. But trying to catch the Liberators on siege is sometimes the way to go, so it's it's hard to fault him. Uh, Void Ray, I still think is going to be. Uh, a much better player, I guess, in this situation, especially with uh, the Vikings starting to come out. Although, at some point, M. Canning, despite the fact that, you know, he focuses on Robo, goes for the Stargate, he might be a little too starved for it at this point. Storms might not have been too bad to have seen either. But uh, these disruptors, unfortunately, doomed to die, caught in the Liberator field. Tempests are doing what they can, but it takes so long to kill those air units and the Marines just stim underneath this. No disruptors to cover them. M. Canning is losing his army. Yeah, he is. It's really hard to have an army that's just three Tempests. Mm, no, I mean, he's making it close. Not the Marauders left over here, so the Tempest now rules supreme. There you go. No, eh. the don't. It's like, it's like an asterisk, right? This is where the Void Ray ends up reigning supreme, hey. if we're going to be honest. But they might get one or two more shots off. I don't know if it'll be a finish. Yeah. The problem is, though, we go back to it. Base over here. Base over here. SCV's mining and income certainly in the favor of Semper. M. Canning's trying to rebuild a new Nexus, but 
you know, his main's mined out, his natural's mined out, his third's gonna be getting low at some point here soon, and if he can't take an army fight here and now, he's not gonna oh, get a I'm chance cool. to get that Nexus up. Probe's pulled into the fray, Disruptor looking for a shot, not good enough, and that's gonna be the game! Yep, yep, yep. GG. Okay, Semper, he takes a pretty solid 2-0 lead, but M candy has got one life left. We're going to go to a commercial break, just two minutes, and when we return, we'll get into game three and see if that's going to be the end of M. Canning's run in the tournament, or if he's maybe got just a little bit more fight left in him. Alright, well I was going to go to the out of game screen. I guess we will for a brief second. Hey, it's our wonderful faces again. How you guys doing? But we are already getting into game. It's Proxima Station. Perfect for proxies. Yo, know, I'm, I'm not surprised, but I've noticed through, I think, the last two casts we've done so both the group stages I, I don't know if we saw paladino even once we did see paladino um well then yeah, it was once <laughs> well i i want to say twice but you uh you, yeah i wouldn't be able to tell you <laughs> what happened to them well the only point i was getting at there was uh if you guys didn't see this was huh. a segue to the map contest has wrapped up They've picked yep. the maps. You know, we gave AVAX that shout out earlier on winning first and third place. And I'm really curious what next season looks like. Because there's always going to be that one map in the pool. In this instance, Paladino, that seems to be picked less than the others. But there's been so much negativity around this map pool. There's probably going to be somewhere around the next map pool. But I'm hoping that with Team Liquid contest winners having been picked, a lot of those maps that were top five, I honestly wouldn't mind seeing the ladder. I guess so. I'm upset about Karis Passage, but whatever. That one was... I like that one too. Yeah, I was sad that didn't quite make the cut, but I'm just glad some of the bad ones didn't either. Like that uh, Gungum style. <laughs> whatever that's I'll never be Forever be referred to as that Gungum style. Alright, well, we're game number three. This gentleman here is on his last life. He's got to pull all the stops or he's knocked out of the tournament in the top right. We do have Flipside Tactics M. Canning. They might just do that with the proxy target. And the bottom left is the purple Terran. It is Root Semper. I'm glad he's willing to try this and make it happen. I mean, it's a little bit more common on this map, so maybe Semper scouts for it blindly. Would not be surprising. Oh, there's a battle cruiser that's like under attack below the map. That's cool. Uh, but anyways, I, I think that win or lose, maybe M Canning just dies right here and now. And goes down 0-3, unfortunately, in like a blaze of terrible not glory. I'm still, I got a lot of respect for this guy. He was a player who was not really on our radar. There's a couple Mimi Disruptor Shot clips here and there on Reddit for him prior to playing this tournament. And I didn't really think much of him. Well, we've seen him play a couple tournament games. He's taking maps off people like Gumiho. He is proven to be a pretty good, I guess, newer face to the scene. I really, I gotta be honest, I don't know how long he's been playing. I haven't been... <laughs> I've only really been introduced to M. Canning very, very recently, so, and I've, I've grown to be a fan pretty quickly. I hope we see more out of him. So, you might be wondering why do the SCV scout for this, and it's because walling off it's, your main base is already suspicious enough. You don't well, really have to scout that it's two gases. There's that combined with the fact that, once again, Proxima Station, this little tower here that we can't see under, like, this is such a common place to proxy things. Uh, oh, we messed up the build! Oh, that supply block. Oh, that kind of sucks. What did he do? Kill uh, a probe I mean, at home? What was he shy on there? He might have canceled a probe. Uh, I think he had to, yeah. I'm not sure. So, uh, that does suck. I mean, it already sucks enough that he knows it's happening. And if there's going to be a proxy Stargate, then you can bank and there are being some proxy pylons. So, M. Canning did want to go for the ultimate cheese, but he realized how well set up Semper was. So, he kind of cut his losses and just goes for the Nexus. It, uh, it's not. It's not a great start here. If his Oracle could get even like five SCVs, that would make it a better start. It's it's something, and the Nexus isn't so delayed as it as it could have been. Oh, but, that's gonna stay. You know, losing the Militia Core, not great. Oracle not doing any damage whatsoever. In fact, mm. getting pretty low from that Cyclone Lock on. Ah, uh, this is not not looking good for the M Can Man himself. It does take a Nexus, but the problem I'm worried about is with that Mothership Core having died. If there's Anything that comes across the map. One widow mine, a couple of marines and a medevac. Like there's just nothing to stop that at home. Turrets are up. I mean I guess there's no magic widow mine to rely on, but the turret will limit how much this oracle can get away with. Oh, that was way too deep. Yeah. 
<laughs> and there we go. It does. Okay. It feels better. All so, right. Someone in chat, by the way, asked an interesting question. What is your opinion on ad blockers? We've actually discussed this on stream a couple of times, and here's the deal. It's 2017. Oh. You need ad block. It's just the internet sucks. People are laying on ads after ads. They want you to click on the next page and generate more ads. Like, people are irresponsible with ads. Base Street TV and Twitch, too, uh, I'd say are probably the better sites for this. We specifically only run ads two minutes at a time and in small designated chunks. So if you guys are liking the content you see, we would love if you would consider turning off ad block. But it's your choice to make at the end of the day. Um, as I don't know if, if if at some point everyone's using ad block and nobody's subscribing to the channel, we can't make money. Then we just disappear. We die. Goodbye. Yes, it is your choice. I suppose just like uh, you know, killing poppies is. And no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was such a Rifkin thing to say. What are you What are you doing? What am I doing? Here? I'm not saying people with ad block kill puppies. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I know. Uh, I know from firsthand experience two years ago how annoying Twitch ads could have been, and they broke a lot. They've I mean, come they, a they long fixed way. the breakage recently, but they still like get too loud. Or actually, the audio thing was great because again, I talked about this last year around TwitchCon, and the big question I asked, like at the Q and A seminar, was like, "Are you guys fixing the volume?" And they said, "Like, yeah, we've known about this beginning issue. We're still looking into it." It right. still isn't quite perfect, sure, but I love that they know that it's a problem that they are. I like constantly working on it. Yeah, but uh, that's why I bought Turbo, and now I have Twitch Prime. So. Yeah, I never had Turbo, but I've always had Amazon Prime. So it was so sweet when they linked those two together. I was like, yes. Yeah. Uh, pretty important to note here that Semper. I mean, he might not have a game-ending push, but keeping M Canning off at third base would be effectively game-ending. Uh, and this is just a really terrible. Yeah. The start like the, the supplies aren't that bad overall, but the start is really not great for M Canning. I think Semper stopped producing SCVs at one point or another to afford uh, all the, like the bunker and you know fit, fitting in an extra barracks, so he isn't running away with the SCV count, but keeping pretty even. Oh with it. my God, that lock on range! The one time a cyclone looks good at killing air units. Pretty good. I love the giggities in chat. That's that three minute <laughs> delay for you is what that is. Uh, Force Force come down trying to lock the units out, but that really just locks him in. Uh, the pylon goes off, and it's going to bleed out a couple of Marines because there's no medevacs to shuffle and shuttle them away. But uh, frankly, this Liberator has proven to be a really big task to get around to get on top of. And this is where those cyclones really shine through. I mean, he does finally break the front lines, but M. Canny has given up a lot of tech to desperately make these units and get things in. I mean, he's floating a bit of money too, because that's the gateways finishing up for warp ins. But while this goes on, Semper's plus one is finishing up. He's got Stim nearing completion. In fact, plus one's now done. So this follow up bio attack is going to be really scary to deal with. Um, plus one, I'm counting, might have a decent probe count and a third base like all Protosses would like to have at this point. He doesn't have any of the tech or upgrades that Protosses would, would usually want. So he's, he's still playing catch up. Uh, uh, thank you to Mini Reaper for the new sub. Die, die, in chat. die. Oh, there it is. It's all the way back up there. All right, so drops in the natural, not uh, too many pylons on the backside, and some very important tech that's not even being chrono boosted. M Canning's really trying to get away with a baller economy. Mm. But that won't happen if the drops kill him. Uh, Simper's drops are going to be pushed away for the time being. Ah, oh, there's some more talk about ad stuff I really want to get into, but we'll hold that for now, guys. Because some of you guys in chat are actually good Samaritans that are misinformed. Well, we'll get into that in a moment. As the attack continues, these stalkers are going to have a really difficult time without Blink. Not just catching the medevacs, but even getting underneath this Liberator. As you can see here, it doesn't quite two-shot them like it used to, but it's still a lot of damage and takes a lot to clean up. Yeah, it still takes out two stalkers. Uh, Pylon... Could have died. That uh, runs away instead. We have some adepts in the main base of Semper causing a little bit of panic. It doesn't fully transfer through though, gets caught by a bunch of reinforcements. Yeah, let's say the Wood of Mine was a pretty good defense to have too. I mean, I'll, I'll give it to him, Kenny. He's still standing and he's got three bases. I didn't actually think this third would get up and running at some point, but his army supply remains low. And I go back to the whole tech thing being a bit late. He finally at least has plus one. He's got some blink to work with, so. 
He's not as naked as he was a few moments ago. If Semper makes any mistakes, M Cannon could very, very truly come back into this, but I still put him at a bit of a disadvantage. Yeah. It's really gotta be with those disruptor shots. The gateway army as is, without resident glaives, without uh, some sort of uh, upgrade lead, would just automatically die. Uh, Widow Mines or not, I, I would say. Yeah. But especially with Widow Mines. So uh, I guess as we have a moment to breathe here, po folks are talking about their Twitch Prime, like they use Twitch Prime, but they disable ad block to be good. And that's actually one of the cool things people don't know. Ad block or not, Twitch Prime, just by being there in chat, counts as having seen an ad. So Twitch like tallies the amount of users in, in chat at the time you run an ad and credits that amount of users as having seen the ad. So even if you have ad block on, Twitch Prime still helps the broadcasters a ton. And that's why we really advocate and we're trying to advertise Twitch Prime all the time because it helps everybody, not just us. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a very difficult position to break. Uh, M Canning should probably just let the gateways go and wait for the army to have to move up a little bit because Widow Mines took the Liberators, Liberators took everything else, and it's going to be tough. Uh, the, uh, if he scans and picks off this observer, that could be devastating, but that Liberator, oh, the Widow nice. Clump. That's really nice. That was huge. That allows the stalkers to blink in. That disruptor was a godsend for M Canning. It really was. Without that, all five Widow Mines, or almost all five Widow Mines, pop off, and whether it's two, three, four, or five. That's a lot of damage on Blink Stalker, so only one is not so bad. Our Zing Glaze is almost done. We have a Stargate on the way. Uh, I guess because the other you one know. was killed, and he still wants to have Oracles for detection. I think Liberator Range is going to be difficult to overcome. We saw him struggle with this last game, and that's where we're heading with his Fusion Core, certainly. But M. Kenny has done a really great job of taking these army fights. Defensively speaking, it's been not bad stopping the drops. He's certainly back in this game. He's back in the saddle. But uh, oh. drop over here is going to be a little bit of a pain. Pylon's a bit low. Scary to overcharge it. Everything dodges to the right. Cannon over here is going to help catch some of the Marines. But really, it's going to be the Warpins that will clean this up. Uh, no matter what, M. Cannon's going to have an upgrade disadvantage. Even if he puts Chrono into it. Just no double forage. And Semper already on his way to 2-2. Two -two, even getting an air upgrade. Did he get an Oracle at all? No, he still only has a Phoenix and going into Void Rays. I mean, Void Rays to deal with the Liberators, but... Surprised he didn't get an Oracle to get some vision going around. Mm, scanning to see if there's extra bases that he's missed. I like that Semper's playing it smart. Not, not trying to overestimate his own position in the game. But at some point, he as well is going to need a fourth. More on that in a moment. Though continues to drop in the natural. As he looks to drop in the main. I mean, this is a big drop that's looking to end the game. M. Canning's out of position for this. But he was last yeah, time too. Probably, yeah, disruptors are really great for these specific problems. When yeah. things are clumped up and protecting each other. The disruptor doesn't have to be... Sacrifice to get the units in a clump killed, so this isn't so bad. Of course, Liberators, uh, they don't quite have range yet, so that's why they're not oh, so out of control. That's right. Yeah, I would actually say that Semper is making a mistake doing these drops. Uh, the first one, you can't blame them. One Disruptor really helps. Okay, that's a mistake. The second one, you would think the same thing would happen, and it, and it kind of did there. So while he saves two Metavacs for the units and, and all of his Metavacs, I still don't think it was quite worth it. Uh, I'm getting moved to gold. If you can get this up and running, this is where the game will start really tipping back into his favor. But 2 2 is finishing up momentarily for Samper, so his bio is going to be even stronger than before. Liberator range as well, about halfway done. That's going to really kick into over, like high gear, and that's going to be so tough to deal with. Well, M. Canning's going to try and be ahead of the curve this game. I mean, last time, while he did get the Tempests at an okay supply compared to Semper. It was still when, you know, oh god, oh, there's already seven there's the liberators, blitz. but that's so the much for the disruptors. He catches the mortals thanks to concussive shells, and that's gonna sting. I don't know if you recover from that. I mean, M. Canning's army supply isn't exactly in the gutter, but he just took such heavy losses. <laughs> His entire GG. army is pendulous. He transfers into Tempest, that was gonna happen. All right, it's sad to see M. Candy knocked out of the group, but it's great to see Semper hold on a little bit longer and hold out for the finals of the group. But a very slick 3-0 streak for him will send him forward, and we'll move now to the winner's match of True versus Neeb, and I think this is the one a lot of people are excited to see. I think that the matchup combined with the prowess of these players, I'm definitely on, like, hashtag Team Neeb for this one, but maybe we'll see something cool coming out of True. Uh, people are still discussing ad block stuff. Guys, I'll just tell you this much. At the end of the day, if you're watching the stream and you're enjoying it enough, I would certainly appreciate it if you disable ad block, whether you're using Twitch Prime or not. But the point of saying that for the Twitch Prime thing wasn't to make feel, wasn't trying to make people who use Twitch Prime and disable ad block feel bad. Just letting you know that you can control your consumption of, of ads this way or another 
but at the end of the day, just having Twitch Prime alone is already super duper helpful. But uh, as we said, we uh, are going to be getting into the winner's match next. Best of five still. They're all best of fives. Two best of fives remain. Winner's match and finals of the group. Old Pork 1 just subbed with Twitch Prime since we've been talking about it. Uh, G-Man Bio a little bit earlier. I don't remember if you got him. I know we got Mini Reaper. But thank you guys for your continued support in the stream. But some sponsored ads coming from the sponsor of the tournament, Ting. Again, quick recap for those who don't know what Ting is. It's a U.S. mobile phone service that looks to save you money each month by possibly trying out their services. What's nice is they do not use plans. So if you're like, well, I don't know. I, I kind of want to support eSports, but I don't want to use Ting if I'm locked in for a year. That's not how it works at all. They do month to month, and you don't have to worry about it. So you can try it for one month. And with the code down below, uh, not code, excuse me, the promotion down below by going to bttv.ting.com, you'll get $25 in credit. The average phone bill with Ting, you're using data, you're sending some text, you're calling your phone, like average use of a phone is going to be about 30 bucks or less a month. So you essentially get to try it for a month. Consider it if you're in the United States. It's definitely worth looking into. But we'll let them do their uh, their talk from their sponsors, from their ads, and we'll see you guys soon.